engines are amazing. Let me show you what they do. This cotton's ready to be harvested. Then they'll take it to the gin to take out the seeds. Let's go to the gin and see how it's done. Harvested cotton gets packed into modules. Trucks haul the modules into a cotton gin. When cotton arrives at the gin, it looks like this. We call it seed cotton. That is because the cotton fibers are still attached to the seed that, that it has been growing on. And here are fibers still attached to the seed and plant matter like leaves, balls, and stalks. At its simplest, a cotton gin's job is to separate out these things. But as you will see, it is not a simple task. I'm not going to explain every machine. Instead, I'll explain what happens in each of the main phrases. The first phrase of a cotton gin is pre-cleaning. This is the pre-cleaning phase. In this phase, the gin wants to get out the pieces of plant material. We usually call it trash. We call it trash, but it has some valuable uses. In this gin, sea cotton is fed through the module feeder where spinning spiked cylinders break up the cotton and drop it onto a moving belt. The seed cotton is picked up off the belt with hot air from really big heaters. A spinning set of chains in the piping system breaks up wads that make it make it that far. Seed cotton then enters knees dryers. When it leaves the dryers, it goes to a stack of machines called incline cleaners and stick machines that are designed to remove trash from the seed cotton. The trash removed by the stick machines look like this. We call it trash, but it has some valuable uses, including feed value, soil enrichment, and mulch. Most gins have a second stage stack of pre-cleaning equipment, and some even have a third. So to recap the pre-cleaning phase, sea cotton goes and looking like this. Then a lot of the trash gets removed. The trash get, gets piled up outside and the, rema the remaining cleaner seed cotton looks like this. Now that it's clean, it goes to the ginning phase. Yes, the whole process is called cotton ginny. But the actual ginning is when the fibers are removed from the seed. Pulling fibers off the seed used to be done by hand. It was slow and tedious work. Legend has it that Eli Whitney was watching a cat try to pull a chicken through a fence and saw only the feathers come through. That gave him an idea to design a machine that would hook onto the cotton fiber and pull it through a narrow gap. The fiber fit through the gap, but the seed would not. So BAM! The cotton gin was invented. The operating principle remains the same today, 
But instead of small hand cranked jigs, these big modern jigs make quick work separating fibers from the seed. Clean seed cotton is fed into the gin stand here. Saws pull fibers for gaps in the in the jenny ribs that the seeds can't fit through. The seeds fall out the bottom of the stand and get moved to a seed house for storage. The fibers get brushed off the saw by special brushes and move on to the next phase. A recap of the jenny phase. Seed cotton goes in, the fibers and the seed get separated, and each go their separate ways. The next phase in the cotton gin is lint cleaning. When the fibers, also called lint, leave the gin stand, it includes lots of good high quality fiber with small bits of trash in something called moats. Moats are fibers attached to small, broken, or immature seeds. If moats or too much trash are left in, in and end up in the final bale, the cotton grade will be lower and the price it sells for will be less. To keep the quality where the bale will have the most value, gins use lint cleaners to remove more trash and moats. Lint cleaners remove the moats and some of the trash and send what was removed into moat bales. The cleaned fiber is sent to the bale packaging phase. Cleaned lint goes down a slide into the bale press. Strong motors and hydraulics uh, press the lint into a neat rectangular bale. A machine automatically puts straps around the bale. Another machine automatically puts a bag on the bale. Cotton bales usually weigh around 500 pounds. The bales get loaded onto a truck. They go to warehouses and eventually get shipped to mills where they get turned into cotton yarn. The packaging phase puts the fibers into a protected usable u uniform bale. Ideal for transport and use by the mills. Here is a typical summary of what goes into a gin and what comes out. A round mo module of sea cotton weighing 4,500 pounds enters the gin. The trash gets removed. That's about 1,100 pounds. The seed gets removed. That's about 1,800 pounds. The moats get removed. That's about 50 pounds. And free bales of lint are, are produced at about 1,550 pounds. To do all of that requires almost 100 motors 3,000 horsepower, multiple computers, and dozens of fans. Massive hydraulic systems, conveyors, augers, bearings, motor controls, PLCs, sensors, miles of electric wire. Up to 20 million BTUs per hour of natural gas, drive belts, pulleys, loads of specialty parts, and on and on. If any one of those things is broken, Jenny could grind to a halt. If things are misadjusted, 
the gin will operate less efficiently and the crop value may suffer. That's why my dad says cotton ginners are some of the smartest and hardworking people he knows. They have to know how to operate and work on all sorts of systems, like mechanical, electrical, pneumatic, and hydraulic. Everything you see in this gin has to be working in harmony, and the cotton ginner makes it happen. The next time you put on a pair of blue jeans, think about all of the work in the place where co- where the cotton processing began. The amazing cotton gin.